아, 아, 응. 아, 分かった。分かってきた。来てる。来そう。はあ。So, um, so this is what we're doing now. So, for those of you who haven't heard, D4DJ just introduced their 11th unit, named a Bad Cynic Doggo. Wow, what a name. And people were concerned that introducing another unit on top of the double digits we already have might make things even more complicated and confusing than they already are. But that's okay, it's called a side story, so maybe they can be sectioned off in their own little corner, and though my god, she's already got a crush on Rinku. Wow. Four more characters on top of the pile. They're really doing this. You know, on this channel, I usually like to be positive, which is why my videos tend to be like why I like every D4 DJ character or a 14 minute video gushing over a dead ship. <clears throat> Ignore those. But I really don't know if introducing these characters was the right decision. Like, the story itself isn't really bad. No hate towards the writers, it's actually pretty interesting. And here's a spoiler warning, I guess. Uh, skip to the timestamp if you want to avoid those. Like I was saying, it's actually a pretty cool spin on the genre. The characters introduced actually think about the main units like audience members would. They think of Rinku as sparkly and shiny, but debate whether that's real or if it's a facade. Hey, wait a minute, this sounds like my Toa Rinki fanfiction. Where was I? Oh yes. They point out Piki's reputation as winners and unstoppable, despite the fact that they have in fact been stopped several times. And they overall give us a perspective on the characters you'd expect from, well, the fans. And oh man, are these characters a mess. Amy is cynical and emotionally detached from reality. Belle would probably sell her grandma for like $13. <laughs> Shika's a uh, smidge parasocial. But those three are nothing compared to Date, who f***ing snorts sugar like it's cocaine. Date-chan-senpai,そしてドル札を手にすると... <sighs> How did they get away with this? But anyways, back to the point I made at the beginning of the video, I don't know if this was the right choice. The story is honestly fine, and it seems like the beginning of a pretty interesting arc, but I wonder if they're overworking the staff. Specifically, their translators. When I first read this story, I was a bit confused, but then I listened to it, and well, yeah. It seems like they used Google Translate for this. Ironically, I don't really know how to put it into words, but some of the mistranslations kind of just, you know, give me that Google Translate vibe. Like, I'm sorry if there's someone who actually tried to manually translate and localize this, but if that's the case, uh, maybe consider getting a proofreader. I know D4DJ doesn't normally do machine translation because no machine on the planet would make Rika say bet. But I'm concerned that with this many characters and this much content, they might be overworking their team to the point where they resort to these translation tools. Well, at least on the English side of things. From what I could tell with my limited years studying Japanese, the dialogue was fine, so the problem lies solely on the English side of things, which wouldn't be the first time Bushiro got a little negligent towards the global release. But hey, that's just a theory. Oh, wait a minute, I already did my game theory video, never mind. <laughs> 